Here I'm going to show you how to save data to another workbook using VBA. So we have a sample form like this. Let us input a part number and a quantity. Hit save. And when we do that, it's going to open up another workbook, put data into it, and then close and save that workbook. And when it's finished, we get a nice little input saved message box. And if I go to the other workbook right now, we can see that the data has been stored into it and saved, and everything will be good. ASC-1 quantity 10. Perfect. So let's close this guy. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this work and go through all of the VBA required to do it. And this is a small part of a much larger course I have on TeachExcel.com for VBA and macros. And if you're interested in that, check out the link in the description for this video. Now before I begin, I just want to show you that this is a regular worksheet right here, nothing special. Go to the View tab and check Grid Lines, and you'll see it's just a regular worksheet with a little bit of formatting added to it, and a button right here with a macro attached to it. But now let's go to the VBA window and make this work. Alt F11. And I'm going to show you how to build this from scratch. So go to Insert, Module, and let us begin. Now there are three main things that we want to do here. And that is to open the workbook, to store data in the workbook, and to close the workbook. And let us begin now with creating three variables to help us out with that. Dim WB master as workbook. Two of these variables, the ones that begin with WB, are going to hold references to workbooks. And so we set them as the workbook type. That means that instead of referencing the actual workbook by name, we can store that reference in these variables and then very easily take data from one and put it in the other one. And that's why you want to do that. And the third variable that I'm going to store, master next row as a long and that will store the number of the next empty row in the master workbook where we want to put the data. And now we need to associate the workbooks with the workbook variables. Let's start with workbook local first. We write set wb local equals to this workbook. Now we have to use the word set because this here, this workbook variable is an object. It is not text or numbers or true false. It is an object. It is a reference to a specific workbook. And so the syntax for working with object variables in order to assign a reference to them is to use the word set. I cover that a lot more in the full course, but just know this is how you make your workbook references here. So set the name of the variable and then give it a workbook reference. We are going to reference this specific workbook here. So technically we could in place of this variable just keep using this workbook. But if you want to change the workbook that you're referring to in the future, it's great to use variables because we only change it once right here at the top of the macro instead of having to change the word this workbook over and over throughout the macro. Now let's create the master workbook reference, and this one is pretty interesting. This is where we want to store the data. And here what we want to do is simultaneously store a reference to a workbook and open that workbook. Because in order to store data in another workbook, we must open it. And to do that, we type workbooks which just says, hey, Excel, I want to deal with the workbooks. And then dot open. What do you want to do with the workbook? You want to open the workbook. Now, open parentheses, what workbook do we want to work with? Well, there are many options we can use, many of them covered in the full course on Teach Excel, but all we really want here is the file name. So give it the full file path, name, and file extension of the file where you want to put the data, the file that you want to open, and that's it right there. And this will simultaneously open this workbook and then pass a reference for this workbook back here so that we can assign it to a variable. And now we can use this word to refer to this workbook that we just opened. And really, this is the important line to get from this tutorial. That is how you open the workbook and get a reference to it. So now we can go ahead and work with it. And the first thing that we want to do is to figure out what row we can put our data in. We type master next row. I'm going to hit control space to fill that in. If you declare your variables at the top of your macro, you can use that shortcut, control space. So master next row equals, and this is going to look kind of crazy, but it's a standard way to get the next row. The first thing we want to do is to tell the macro which workbook we want to deal with. Well, I want to deal with the master workbook. Okay, now what do you want to do with that? Well, we want to go to the worksheet where our data will be stored. 
That is called the data worksheet. Very simple. Now, what do you want to do there? Well, this is where we want to do something with the ranges. And so we're going to use dot range, open parentheses, and here we are going to create a range reference that will refer to the very last cell in a specific column. So we choose the column. This is going to be column A. Make sure it is a column that will always have data in it. So not a column in your data table that can be empty because this is what will be used to find the last row of data so that we can get the next empty row of data from that. And to figure out what the last possible row is, we just once again reference the master workbook and the worksheet that we want to deal with, which is the data worksheet. And then we want to get the very last row, so we access rows, and then we count how many there are. Like I said, it looks crazy, but this is the standard way to get the next empty row. Now, once we've gotten the very last row, the very last cell in column A, we type dot, and then we go end XL up. And what that's going to do is go up from the bottom until it hits some data. But we don't want the last row with data. We want the next empty row. So we type dot offset there, and we put one so it will go down one row. And now we have a range reference for the next empty cell in column A, but we want a row number. So we type dot row in order to get the number of the row. Now we can use this whenever we want to reference the very next empty row of data in our master workbook. And once you have that, you are ready to take data from this workbook and put it into the master workbook. Now, if I was to make things a bit more formal, I would store references to the data worksheet as well. And I would store perhaps either range references or at least create other variables to store the value from the form in this workbook. But for this tutorial, we're just going to keep things simple, and we're going to take a value directly from this local workbook and put it right into the master workbook. To do that, we go down here. First, we say, hey, what workbook do we want to work with? Well, I want to work with the master workbook. What do I want to do with it? I want to go to the worksheet that has the data in it, data worksheet. And what do I want to do there? Well, I would like to access the next empty row for column A. So I'm going to use cells in order to return that range reference. And then the row I'd like to deal with, the row is the master next row, the next empty row, and the column, which is column A. So one for A, two for B, three for C, and that's how we make our reference for the range to put our data into. Just type dot value so we can explicitly say, hey, I want to deal with the value in that cell. And now I want to set it equal to something. What do I want to set it equal to? Well, the value from my input form here in the local workbook. So I type WB local. Then I reference the correct worksheet, which is input. And then the correct range. And what do you want to do with that range? Get the value. Just like that. So now we have a template to very easily take a value from this workbook, our input form, and then go over here and put it into the master workbook. So all we're going to do now is to copy this line, go down here, and change it for the next value. The next value should go into column B. So we change 1 to 2, and we want to get it from F. Five. If I go back to the workbook, you can see F3 and F5 here on the input worksheet. Now we will have successfully taken data from one workbook and put it into another workbook. And we are done. So it is time to once again talk to the master workbook and tell it what to do. It is time for us to tell it to close and hit a space. The first argument here, it's a beautiful, lovely argument, save changes. This, setting this to true, allows us to simultaneously save and close this workbook without a prompt. And once we're done with that, let's go ahead and tell the user input saved. And that is it. This tiny little macro is going to do that. Let us go back to the workbook and test it out. I've already assigned the macro to this button, but if you have not yet done that, right-click your button and go to Assign Macro, which is currently off the screen. You get this little window, select the macro from your workbook, and hit OK. 
Now let's go ahead to ASC-2, and how about 15 for the quantity? And save. Input saved. All right, let's open up the data workbook and see if it was actually saved. And there we go. ASC-215 in the very next empty row. We have opened this workbook, we have saved data into this workbook, and closed this workbook. It is really as easy as that. Now the next thing, let's just clear these cells, and let's make it so it looks a little better when we put the data in the other workbook. So if you go back just a moment in the video, you will see the screen flicker, and maybe you don't want that. So let's hit Alt F11 to go back here. Now you choose where you want to clear the form. Do you want to clear the form before the user gets the input saved message box or after they do? It's up to you how you want to do that. But here we're going to put it right here above the message box. So what workbook do we want to deal with? WB local. All right, what do we want to do there? Go to the worksheets, input worksheet. And what do I want to do there? Access the desired range, the value, and set it equal to nothing. And then we just copy this line and do it for the next one, F5. And like I said, when you make it more formal, you will save this range reference as well as all of these worksheet references into their own variables to make life a little bit easier. However, this setup right here, though a bit more verbose, I think is easier to understand when you're starting out. In the course, I make it a lot more formal as the course progresses and teach you how to do all sorts of cool things. And the last thing is to get the flickering off of the screen. So let's go up here and we are going to type application.screen updating and set it equal to false. This will stop the screen from updating until we turn it back on. Let's say application.screen updating equals true right here. And there we go. All right, let us check it out now. ASC-3. Quantity, how about 11? Save. Notice this time you did not see a window kind of appear above this for just a moment. And you may have noticed that the form did not appear to be empty until I hit OK in the message box. The reason for that was where I put application.screen updating. So in addition to putting message box above or below where you want to clear the data, also where you put application.screen updating will impact when you see changes that are made to the workbook. If that sounds confusing, just play around with these few lines right here and switch up the order, and you will see that it makes it behave just a little bit different. Now, the full VBA course on TeachExcel.com covers so much more than just this limited tutorial. So if you are interested in learning a lot more and becoming an expert at VBA and macros for Excel, I highly recommend you check out that course, and the link to it will be in the description for this video.